I came across a petition on change.org in support of Andrew Bridgen after being kicked out of the Conservative Party, which looked like it had been written by an illiterate eight-year-old and didn't actually have a stated objective beyond justice. So I decided to do my own. The link is in the description box of this video. Give it a sign if you'd like to. Restore the Conservative Party whip to MP Andrew Bridgen. The keen-eyed will have observed that my current supporters total fully two. I'm hoping that this can be improved. I said, Andrew Bridgen, Conservative MP for North West Leicestershire, had the party whip removed on January 11th, 23, after he posted the following comment on his Twitter account. As one consultant cardiologist said to me, this is the biggest crime against humanity since the Holocaust. Chief Whip Simon Hart, who took the decision, gave the following reason. Misinformation about the vaccine causes harm and costs lives. I am therefore removing the whip from Andrew Bridgen with immediate effect, pending a formal investigation, adding that Andrew Bridgen was guilty of causing great offence. It's not clear from the Chief Whip's statement whether the misinformation in question is the Holocaust reference, any of the other many statements Andrew Bridgen has made critical of the Covid vaccines, or a combination of the two. Also not clear is the nature of the great offence caused. Holocaust references are always potentially provocative, but Andrew Bridgen's words do not appear to demean or belittle that historical event. Removal of the whip on an ill-defined basis seems unreasonable. I call for the Conservative Party whip to be restored to Andrew Bridgen and for it not to be removed until such a time as a clearly defined and well substantiated offence is determined to have been committed and then only after Andrew Bridgen has been given the opportunity to defend himself and his defence is rejected. The link, like I said, is in the description box underneath this video. I also posted it on Twitter and that link is also in the description. Bridgen's shtick, which is what got him kicked out of the party, is vaccine harms rather than vaccine efficacy. Is he right, or would you be throwing your signature away? In that whip-stripping tweet, he linked to an article which is a transcription of a piece by that fellow Josh Gertzkow. I noted previously that he's Jewish, somewhat ironically since the phraseology in the tweet, when linking to an article by a Jew, got him accused of being anti-Jewish. I dealt with the anti-Semitism slur in previous videos, and I'll look at the content of the article and see if his uh, removal from the party is in any way valid on this basis. Data was taken from that nice long two and a half year period. He points out that the total adverse events are 5.5 times larger than all serious reports for vaccines given to adults in the US since 2009. An objection to put out there might be, are the numbers skewed by the sheer focus on the COVID vaccines, which would be absent from all all previous vaccines. I'll come back to that. But even with that said, you would need a hugely skewed focus to yield these extreme numbers, 73,000 in just two years compared to just 13,000 overall since 2009. And also, twice as many mRNA COVID-19 vaccine reports were classified as serious compared to all other vaccines given to adults. So that's then a completely like-for-like -like comparison. And this meets the CDC definition of a safety signal. A safety signal is generated if a given ad adverse event is at least twice as numerous compared to the total adverse events when it is then compared to other vaccines. And if the total is statistically significant, then you have a safety signal. And all these charts list totals which represent safety signals. So it's not so much that there were, for example, 70,000 cardiovascular events, because that can be meaningless in context, but that, that total is statistically significant. And all of these charts represent safety signals. My objection above was, is the number not potentially skewed by the sheer focus on the COVID vaccines compared to the total? lack of any focus on previous vaccines. He addresses all of these various objections towards the end, including that one I mentioned, which is along the lines of, so many people were afraid of the vaccine, so they blamed all their health problems on it. What he says to that is, if adverse events are artificially inflated, they should be artificially inflated to the same degree, meaning the ratios for all of these safety signals should be about the same. It's an interesting point. If it was the simple focus on the vaccines compared to basically zero focus on all 
other previous vaccines which caused that radical uptick in reports. And this is a very radical uptick indeed. If it was that sheer spotlight on the vaccines causing the adverse event reports unrelated to the vaccines, then those adverse events, which wouldn't actually be adverse events, they'd simply be health events in people's lives, would be randomly picking the vaccine as the cause and they would occur with uniform frequency because they would be being randomly selected. But even a casual glance at the ratios in the Excel file shows they vary widely from as low as 2 to as high as 105 for vaccine breakthrough infections or 74 for cerebral thrombosis. Artificially inflated reporting cannot explain why so many different adverse events have large ratios that are statistically distinct from one another. And he goes on to quote an apparently renowned professor in risk analysis. From a Bayesian perspective, the probability that the true rate of the adverse events of the COVID-19 vaccines is not higher than that of the non-COVID vaccines is essentially zero. The onus is on the regulators to come up with some other causal explanation for the difference if they wish to claim that the probability of a COVID vaccine adverse event resulting in death is not statistically higher than that of other vaccines. So looking at just this document that Andrew Bridgen included in his infamous tweet and not looking at anything else, there does seem to be compelling evidence in support of the claims that got him kicked out of the Conservative Party. Maybe not enough to justify this exact claim here, but there is more evidence out there than just this document. So don't forget to sign my petition.